Hello, this is Russell Hawley talking to you from the Tate Geological Museum at Casper College in Wyoming. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Swan Lake Quarry, which is a discovery made by staff and diggers right here at the Tate Geological Museum. Now for over a century, fossil hunters have known about the White River Formation which is a uh, rock layer dating from the tertiary period, after the dinosaurs died out, but still long before there were any people. So no dinosaur bones in the White River, no people bones either, but uh, thousands uh, or millions of spectacular fossils from ancient mammals and reptiles, uh, like this oreodont, for example, an example of the uh, kind of mammal fossils that have been turning up in the White River for decades and are well known to paleontologists all over the world. What you don't find, usually, in the White River formation are the fossils of plants. And so, whereas we've got a very detailed picture of what the animal life was like in Wyoming uh, during the late Eocene and early Oligocene, uh, about 35 million years ago, uh, for a long time, nobody really knew what kinds of plants were present. There were the seeds of hackberry trees, and that was about it. The rest of the flora was a mystery. Until Dr. Kent Sindel here at Casper College discovered a freshwater limestone not too far from Douglas. And uh, in that limestone, there were the bones of fish and other uh, freshwater creatures, but also there was quite a bit of plant material. Here's just one slab of rock from the Swan Lake Quarry, and it shows fragments of stems and leaves and all sorts of other things. And uh, this is uh, our first clue as to what the plant life was like in Wyoming at the beginning of the Oligocene. Now, uh, much of it is unidentifiable, but fortunately, in addition to these large fossils, pollen and spores were preserved as well. These were sent to the University of Wyoming Geology Museum down in Laramie, and a pollen expert uh, studied it under the microscope and gave us lists of what sorts of plants were represented. Now, uh, one of the more enigmatic fossils that we find at the Swan Lake Quarry looks like this. And this is a stem jointed of some kind of plant. And uh, Dr. Sindel thought at first that it might be bamboo, which would be interesting since there's certainly no bamboo living in Wyoming today. However, it's important to note that uh, during the tertiary, there were also horsetails, also known as uh, scouring rushes or snake grass. And some of those could get fairly large and they had that same sort of segmented stem. So that could be what we're looking at here. The um, other fossils that have been found uh, in these rocks uh, allowed me to do a reconstruction of what the life of that lake would have looked like. There was a tooth from a beaver-like rodent uh, the aforementioned fish bones, probably of fish similar to a modern perch, and lots and lots of fossil snails. The uh, plant fossils uh, include freshwater algae uh, of the uh, caraphyte group, and then there's our segmented plant sticking up from the side. And there is also uh, leaves similar to those of a willow tree. Now the spores allowed me to do a reconstruction of what sorts of plants might have been growing near the water's edge. And these include uh, alder, and uh, because of the willow-shaped leaves, I've drawn a willow tree back there. And there's also trichoporate pollen, similar to that of a modern oak tree. So the genus Quercus, which includes the oak, may have been present as well. There are spores of polypody ferns, and royal cinnamon ferns and tree ferns, uh, which is kind of surprising because these today mostly grow down in Central America, not up in Wyoming. That would have led to, loaned a sort of subtropical look to this fauna. Uh, Kenopodium, that's goosefoot. There's our horsetail, equisetum, and there were also fungus spores. They didn't have any idea what species of fungus, but I drew shelf fungus because I think they look cool. Finally, there was a handful of uh, pollen species that were identified, including hemlock, pine, 
and spruce, which are uh, not fond of lowland, wet, or swampy areas, but prefer cool, dry, upland environments. We think that these may have been growing on a nearby hillside, and then the pollen blew into the lake from above.